It's a very interesting question. Uh, somebody's frustrated with the Lord and uh, just wondering why this is happening. Uh, I think that uh, as we answer this question, um, I just want to say that there is uh, a moment in time when we are concerned about what's affecting us. Um, and a lot of people say, well, I'm like Job, but they're really not. I'm going to speak openly and honestly to answer this question, but Linda, if you're watching, um, hear what I'm saying. I'm not speaking to your emotion, but I'm speaking to you. When Job, at the end of his book, God begins to address Job, and he roughly asks him, it says he answered him out of the storm. God didn't come to him in a nice, quiet place. He answered him out of the storm. And the questions are very deep. We'll read the end of Job in just a moment. But I'd like to answer you according to your questions and try to deal with some of the things related to your emotions. So go ahead and put the question up. It says, if God already knew that Job would remain faithful. So she's obviously heard commentary on this. My commentary or somebody's commentary. If God already knew that Job would remain faithful, why was he playing this game with Satan? Why was he playing this game with Satan? It just bugs me. It's like when it's like we're a chessboard. My oldest sister lost all her children, three. The first when he was a baby, the second when he was a senior in high school, and the third she was in a bad wreck when she was in college and she was in a coma for six weeks. I prayed to God at the bottom of her bed to let her live. She lived, finished college, and she was 36. She woke up with pains and couldn't breathe, so she went to the ER, and the doctors did an MRI and other tests and sent her home. The next day, she died from preliminary embolism. The tech guy didn't catch it in the MRI. I always say that my sister is a modern-day Job because she herself has had a brain tumor, lupus, and a lump on her parathyroid she had to have removed. Linda. Linda, let me tell you that uh, I want to thank you for expressing yourself and uh, allowing us to hear the frustration and the turmoil that you're going through. I think it's important that we all understand that there is a great deal of turmoil that you're going to. But one of the things that I need to say, and this is important, is that God doesn't play games. Linda, listen to me. God doesn't play games. Listen to me, Linda. God doesn't play games with Satan. God doesn't play games with us. Linda, God does not play games. So you need to understand that. He wasn't playing a game. Satan lied to God and said he would turn away. And God said, what he has is yours. Satan did the damage. Very important. God does not make things go wrong, Linda, with us. God is not responsible for our diseases. God is not responsible for the things that go wrong with us. God is not responsible, Linda. Keep that in your mind. That's very important, very hard. I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer you. And I'm answering you not according to your emotion, but I'm answering you according to what you've said. We are all born in sin. Everybody, in the sound of my voice, everybody who's human, is born in sin. We are. We're born in sin, but we have the opportunity because of Jesus Christ who died on the cross. We killed him. He died on the cross. He allowed us to kill him 2,000 years ago. I mean, brutally on a cross. We even stabbed him in the side. It was a, we beat him. We tortured him. We beat the flesh off of him. You want to talk about God in heaven allowing us to do this to him? He was brutal. Brutal. 
And then we buried him, wrapped his body and buried him. And three days later, he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. He overcame all the things we did to him and rose from the dead. And as a result of that, he said to his disciples and he says to us, go tell people that if they invite me into their life, I will help them change. I will help them. Keep that in mind. We have the opportunity, listen carefully, to be saved from hell. Hell is real. Hell is a burning sensation that is real. It's awful. It's horrible. I can't even express the words that hell is. Number four, we are saved from eternal destruction, not from all the evils in this life. Eternal destructions are far worse than anything we could experience in this life. But we're saved from that because God helps us. Number five, God knows that we do not know that. He knows that we need to know God. When we come to know God, we realize that. Now, I, I just want to take you, if you'll just have patience with me. It doesn't answer the question to your emotion. God will answer that. Chapter 42 of Job, after God finishes all these questions, God ends with this question. He beholds every high thing. He is the king over the children of pride. God is the king over the children of pride. We need to pay attention to his word. Okay, that's what his word says. Then his word says in chapter 42, Job 42, verse 1, Then Job answered the Lord. Job, who called on God to listen to him, listen to him. God did listen to him. And God confronted him with 86 questions. And Job said this to God, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You ask, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand. I've said what I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said, I will question you, and you shall answer me. I have heard you by the hearing of the ear. But now my eye sees you, Job says. Therefore, I abhor myself. I am embarrassed. I abhor myself. And I repent in the dust and the ashes. Because Job saw in his state who God really was. Now remember that it was Satan who said, Job will curse you <laughs> when you take this from him, take his kids from him and everything else. But let me tell you something. God didn't hold Job responsible because God knew what was going on. The next verse says, and so it was after the Lord had spoken these words to Job that the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Timonite, who was one of the friends, my wrath is aroused against you and your two friends. Bildad and Zophar. For you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore take yourselves and seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering and my servant Job will pray for you. lest I deal with you according to your foolishness. Because you have not spoken to me what is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Timonite and Bildad and Shu, the Shulite and Zophar the, uh, or Shulite, the Zophar the Namathite went and did according to what the Lord commanded them, for the Lord had accepted Job. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers and his sisters and those who had been his acquaintances before came to him 
and ate food with him in his house, and they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity which the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. If you read the book of Job, you understand it. Job, in the first two chapters, did not curse God and die. But let me tell you something in the first two chapters of Job. And you want to call people Job, that's fine. I, I don't, because nobody can understand what Job went through. God went through worse. God went through, I mean, just the sin itself. Listen to this. After Job had painful boils from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head and took himself a potsherd with which he could scrape himself, chapter 2, verse 8, or verse 9, then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity, Job? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one foolish woman speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God? And shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. By the way, now Job's three friends heard of, this is chapter 2, of all of his adversity and that they had come upon him, which each one came from his own place. Eliphaz, the Timonite, Bildad, the Shuite, and Zophar, the Namathite. For they had made appointments to gather, to come and mourn with him and to confront him. And when they raised their eyes from afar and did see or did not recognize him because he was so distraught, they lifted their voices and wept. Each one tore his robe and sprinkled dust on his head towards heaven. So they sat down with him on the ground seven days. They spoke no word to him. Seven days. For they saw his grief was very great. No, no one's like Job. I understand we go through difficult times. Look, I get it. I've gone through many difficult times. I go through some difficult times. I'm going through one right now, and I'm coming out of it. I think it's important to remember that there are things that happen to us. But let's remember, regardless of that, we will be healed because when we have known the Lord, we will come to the Lord. Now, other people's problems are very deep. But we must remember our salvation with God in the midst of other people's problems. Remember your salvation with God. And try to show them that they have salvation too. I, I don't know if this answers your question. But I can only speak to you from what God said. What do you think, Kevin? Kevin? I, I love what you said, Pastor Rod, and I agree, and not much I could I could add, but I would say that um, I do believe that, uh, I believe it was Linda that asked the question. Yes. Um, I believe that uh, your sister and you and whoever else is feeling like this need to have that long process with the Lord and figure out exactly what God is doing in your life through this situation. And even like Pastor Rod said, read through the book of Job again and, and see everything that's going on and, and why God did, why God allowed what took place to Job. Um, that's one thing that's very important. God didn't do it, but God knew. Here's the thing, too. God knew that Job would be faithful. God knows everything, right? He sees the beginning and the end at the same time. And God knew what Job would choose to do, but... Job needed to know what he would choose to do. It, you know, he needed to work all work out his faith. He needed to work work out his his relationship with God. So Job needed to know. And you know, when we think about um, a carpenter, right? He'll take on a rough piece of wood. He'll take sandpaper and just grind it, grind it, grind it. That process, and of course, that's an inanimate object. But that process is not easy for the piece of wood. And God allows things to happen in our lives to shape us and to build our faith. And the other point I would make is we all belong to him. And he wants to shape us for his glory. 
that that grinding and that that um, the, the, uh, where is it Jeremiah 18 where it talks about uh, the the clay on the potter's wheel right and and how Israel is that clay and and God is molding and shaping and God's people are that clay and God wants to mold and shape us and there's going to be some things that need to be removed and it's going to be very painful and it's not going to make sense at the time but God is going to use. Uh, that clay and, and mold it and shape it into the the vessel that he wants to make it into. The other thing I would point to is think about the testimony at the end. God is glorified at the end and no no individual will ever replace the kids that Job lost or that your sister lost. That's not possible. But Job's outlook was changed and he was at the point where his relationship with God deepened and he was able to pray for his friends. And uh, in, in the midst of their rebuking Job falsely, now he was able to pray for them so that they would be forgiven. But remember, the testimony at the end, the people around him would say, wait a second, Job went through this and he still loves God? That's insane, right? And, and so you'll see, you'll see people around the world, like Pastor Rod just said, we all go through these trials and these tribulations and we deal with these things and your sister has gone through something significant and that again needs to be a process between her and the lord um and you and the lord as well but uh but imagine the people that will come on board uh and, and see what god is doing in your life as you still treat god with honor and respect in the midst of the pain and anguish that you've experienced and remember also that we all belong to him at the end of the day. Sometimes we can point the finger at God, but we belong to him. We are his. He, he, and, he, and he shapes us and molds us as he sees fit. And I just want to read one uh, verse really quickly in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. It says, they triumphed over him, meaning the accuser, um, the enemy, right? They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death the word of our testimony is is so powerful and it, it just helps because we we are evidence of the fact that god is good and he's gracious and he's merciful and he's kind and he's loving he's compassionate we are evidence of that because of the things we've gone through and we've seen god see us through he's been faithful to see us through and our testimony is so important. So tell the people around you of what God has done. And you can don't you don't need to lie, but but be real and say God's still working on me. I know He's good. I'm still working through some things, but He's been faithful. You know because the, our testimony is powerful, and it's so vital that we are that walking billboard, pointing people to Jesus Christ. So that's my two cents on it. Excellent, Kevin. Very good, uh, Ray. Yeah, I, I was thinking, Rod, that we're, we're living in a fallen world. If we go right back to the Garden of Eden, the one thing, and there's a little bit of this in, in perhaps hidden in Linda's question, the one thing that Satan tried to get Eve to do was to reconsider the Word of God. The Lord said, don't do this. Satan says, did God say? So in other words, to reconsider the Word of God. And sometimes when tragedies come into our lives and other things happen in our lives, we hear that still small voice that says, is this correct? Is this correct? You know, why did this happen to Job? Why has this happened to Linda's uh, family, etc.? All we know is we live in a fallen world and bad things happen as a result of that. God is not going to intervene on every difficult set of circumstances and situations. Um, I, I was reminded here of, of uh, Harold uh, uh, Spafford, I think his name was, who wrote the song, It Is Well With My Soul. He sends his family from the US, I think, to, to the UK, and they all died on a ship. You know, when the ship, uh, I think, capsized or something. Yes. As he's traveling over that same area, God spoke to him, and he wrote that beautiful hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. In other words, 
It isn't going to affect his faith and his trust and his confidence in God. So the bottom line of all of this is that we must be in so much in relationship with God that when tragedy comes upon us, we don't say what Satan said to Eve. He's trying to get us to reconsider the word of God. It's our faith that gets us through. Every one of the disciples died either tragically or after they had been or soon after they had been brutalized one way or another. Not one of them really survived without some form of punishment. Uh, in fact, the, in, in Hebrews 11, it talks about how they were skinned alive, how they were boiled in oil, and goodness knows what. Very good. We live in a fallen world. It's very interesting. Uh, do you want to add anything, uh, Matt? Or, uh, yeah, Matt? Yeah, you know, I, I was thinking... Because, you know, of you three guys before me, I, I probably wouldn't say anything. And it just it just really hit me, and I've thought about this before, that no matter what we go through, it doesn't change who God is, his right. character. His character is love. He, he is a level of love that we cannot perceive. Not one parent here, I know there's not a parent here that could say, I will sacrifice my child. For others, I have that level of love. I'm willing to see my child humiliated and tortured to death for these other people who are doing the torturing, who are humiliating uh, a king. So the Lord allowed us, allowed people on earth to torture his son to death because of a level of love we cannot perceive. So no matter what we go through, it doesn't change who God is. He is the most loving being there is. Jesus allowed himself to be crucified. The word tells us that he had angels at his order that the Lord would send him. And you know what? I kind of think my imagination tells me those angels had their hands on their hilts and were like, we're ready to protect the master. We'll, we'll take him out. Just say the word. We'll protect the master. And he allowed it. So that's a level of love. No matter what we go through, that doesn't change who God is. And you know what? It's not to lessen what we go through. It hurts me just to think, Linda, of what your sister went through. And if you had to talk about it, I'm sure you'd get emotional. But our life is but a vapor, the word says. It's like a puff of smoke. If you took a rope and took it as far as you could to the left and to the right, to the east, to the west, and you put a dot on it, that's our life here. Everything is healed. There's complete healing, all that emotional scarring. Everything is gone once we're with the Lord and we're in the presence with the Lord. But the Lord, the loving God, who he is in character, will help us get through that time no matter what it is. Yeah, very good. And by the way, Linda J. is on here. It's not Linda J. who asked the question. Uh, so, she, wait, Linda, I'm trying to help you. It's not you who asked the question. We got that question from an email, but a very good question. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of this. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin? Thank you. Sorry, I was on mute there, but uh, but always a pleasure to, to be with you guys. And yeah, it was fun today. All right, very good. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, pleasure to be here, Ron, as always. Thank you, Matt. Good to be here. It was awesome to feel the presence of the Lord. If we didn't get to your prayer request live, I know we're into the, the chat portion. It will go out on Wednesday's uh, prayer request. All right, my friends. Uh, we will talk to you all on the next program on Friday. Jim's back with us. I talked to Jim yesterday. And uh, so it's, it's all very good. Uh, so praise God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you as he writes his name in your life this week. We'll see you later.